time he comes over, I'm supposed to give it to them in the night and in the morning because he couldn't even touch them. Because they were afraid, because they hadn't, they hadn't learned to trust the place and me. But I want to tell you the most wonderful thing that happened uh, over the weekend on Friday night. I was, after I finished doing whatever it was doing, um, errands and so on, and getting their dinner, my dinner, etc. I was watching TV, and I have a little love seat with a recliner, so I had my feet up, and they were playing, so that was fine. And then I looked down, and I didn't hear them. I looked down, there they were, right beside the couch. Both of them stretched out. They were. They. It wasn't. They weren't curled up. They were stretched out, as if in <laughs> silent repose. They were just so comfortable. And I was so thankful. Oh. Reverend Bruce said, what's the feeling when you demonstrate something? What's the feeling? I knew it exactly. It was the feeling I had when I saw those little furry friends stretched out. I was so grateful. I was so full of love and gratitude. It was the best thing possible. Well, there a couple more things that are possible, but <laughs> this month has been all about making the impossible possible, but I'm happy for this possibility. There they were, and then you know how your monkey mind will start talking to you and saying, well, maybe, you know, maybe it was just they were tired, like, you know, they, they played too hard and they were just tired. They happened to flake out by your couch. I knew that wasn't true, but I still, the monkey mind was going blah, 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 blah. So yesterday, I was sitting in my meditation chair, and they were in other places in the house. They have these little plain mics that they swat around on the kitchen floor like they're playing hockey with one another. It's just adorable. Um, and, and they were doing that, and I went into my room to meditate and to do some reading. All of a sudden, I look up. They're both those cats stretched out. One on his back, one just stretched out right there by my meditation chair. It wasn't an accident. They now, I'm their safe place. And I'm so grateful. So that feeling of gratitude and love is, mm, it's yummy. It is so yummy and it's so good. And we can practice that, which um, I have been practicing, and these guys showed up. And all I had to do was let them get used to me, be myself, keep loving them, not freak out because some of the things they do, mm, like, <laughs> Like one of the things, one of the places they think they should be is on my kitchen, on my dining room table. They love the dining room table because they can come to the dining room table and see what I'm eating, see what I'm reading, see what I'm doing on my iPad, and it's not the place for them. So lesson number two will be disciplining my cats to do what they're to not do what they are doing, but right now, I'm very happy that they're comfortable, that they're comfortable. When I was preparing this, I'm thinking, the whole thing for us, that for us to get out of this, is that it's never about the doing. It's never about the, oh, I'm hurrying, 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 even though some of the things that we're doing are really important, as Reverend Ray, Bruce often says, brave and wonderful things that you're doing, that we're doing these things, we're making a difference in the world, and yet it isn't the doing that makes the difference. It's the who we are as we're doing the doing that makes the difference. It's the being that we are. So, do we have tools for this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And our first two most important tools are meditation and affirmative prayer and spiritual mindfulness. Meditation, which helps us to get still, to relax, and to get present to what's going on right now. What's happening right now in this moment, that's what, it, that's what happens in meditation. 
So what's happening right now in uh, Pacific Grove with Solomar, there is an Solomar conference that we used to have annually when Ernest Holmes was alive. He, it was one of the things that he most looked forward to. Both organizations, when we split, we both had a Silomar conferences for a week. And it's going on right now. That's where River Judy is. She's at the Silomar conference. And that Silomar conference is uh, a place of great renewal, some rest if you, if you try. Mm -hmm. But the, really, there's so much to do all day long and all well into the evening that it isn't a place where you automatically get renewed. You have to make choices. And um, the last time Ernest Holmes was there was 60 years ago, 1959. Mm -hmm. And he gave, he always gave a, a lecture called Sermon by the Sea. Yeah. And this month's Science of Mind magazine featured a segment of it. And I'm going to share some of it with you because I think this is exactly what we need to remember. What we need to remember. I copied all the lyrics on Point Rapid and I didn't share them with you, so. Oh well. <laughs> this is, no, I've moved on to this. So, each of these sentences begin with the same thing. Find me one person who lives. And this one begins. Find me one person who is for something and against nothing, who is redeemed enough not to condemn others out of the burden of his soul, and I will find another savior, another Jesus, an exalted human being. Find me one person who longer, no longer has any fear of the universe, or of God, or of man, or of anything else. And you will have brought to me someone in whose presence we may sit, and fear shall vanish as clouds before the sunlight. Find me one person who can get his own littleness out of the way and he shall reveal to me the immeasurable magnitude of the universe in which I live. Find me one person who knows how to talk to God really, and I shall walk with him through the woods, and everything that seems inanimate will respond. The leaves of the trees will clap their hands, the grass will grow soft under him. Find me someone who is no longer sad, whose memory has been redeemed from morbidity, and I shall hear laughter. Find me someone whose song is really celestial, because it, it is the outburst of the cosmic urge to sing, and I shall hear the music of the spheres. Find me one person who has so completely divorced himself from all arrogance, and you will have discovered for me an open pathway to the kingdom of God here and now. Then he goes on, find 1,000 people who know that, that and use it and the world will no longer be famished. How important it is that each one of us in his simple way shall live from God to God, with God, in God, and to each other. That is why we are here, and what we are talking about with us, I trust, is a vision and an inspiration, something beyond a hope and a longing that the living spirit shall through us walk anew into its own creation and a new glory come into a new dawn. That's only a segment of the segment. It's powerful ideas, powerful words. Each one of us, you are that person. I am that person. Our hundred people are part of the thousand people. But we need to keep practicing. We need to keep practicing steadfastly seeing the good regardless of circumstances.
steadfastly releasing all fear, regardless of the circumstance. To know that that presence within us is far greater than any circumstances on the outer. It's infinite and eternal and all power. And it resides right where you are, right where I am. And it is for us. It is for everything else, all creation, all cultures, all people. We each have them. We don't always remember who we are. And it is in the remembering who we are that we awaken and the world awakens. Never forget, you are making a difference just by being awake just by tuning in to that presence, tuning in to be grateful, tuning in to say, wow, what a wonderful life. How great this is. Whether I get to play dress up or not, it's a great life. Whether we get to do silly, funny things, um, it's a great life. That we share it with of like minds, and no matter whether there are other religious scientists present or not, everyone is made in the image and likeness of source. All beings everywhere, every single one. <sighs> so those of us who have been busy, 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 too busy to say hello to our friends, too busy to do our normal, natural things. Take a deep breath. Let go of it. You know what? That busyness is just a story you've been telling yourself because it was it was convenient. It was convenient for you to be busy. Just like it's been convenient for me to be busy. But that isn't where the power is. The power is in what letting go of the busyness, of opening, telling the truth, even though it's scary, and taking the next step often into the unknown. That's who we are. That's who we've come here to be. And it's magnificent. I am so greatly blessed. And so are you. And so are you. This is what I know for certain. I know that there's only one life, and that's the life of God. It's whole, complete, and perfect in absolutely every way. It is everywhere present. It is in all space and time, and in the timeless. In the infinite realm, the I am sing, I am, I am, I am. That voice celestial is in each one of us. And so from an awareness of my oneness with Source, I speak this word for everybody here and everybody watching. This is what I know is true. I know that I am that joy. I am making a difference by shining my light into the, my own dark places within me. By steadfastly remembering the truth and practicing, practicing, practicing to be present, to be fully alive and fully conscious, to say yes to that presence within me and to say yes to the presence everywhere. What I know is that perfect wholeness is mine because it's natural and normal for life itself to produce health. And so life within me is radiant health, dynamic well-being, ageless, timeless beingness. 
I know it is natural and normal for there to be love and joy in my life. And so I say yes and thank you, God, for all the love that is there. I give love to all, and I receive love from all. It's easy for me to remain in love. Just like it's easy for me to remember that I live in a prosperous universe that is forever creating out of itself, that is forever multiplying itself, creating more good and greater good. So I say yes to financial freedom. I say yes to liberty, to life. And I say yes to creativity. I know that that creative process of divine mind is moving through me right now, healing those false beliefs, revealing the truth, and the truth sets me free. I'm so grateful for this freedom. I'm so grateful for this life and for this presence. And with my heart just overflowing with gratitude, overflowing with love, I simply tell the truth about it. It's done, and so it is. So it is. And now, Kelly Corsino. Thank you for that talk. I've been guilty of it. <laughs>
It's time for us to share our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. If the uh, stewards would come, come forth, I just have a couple of things I wanted to say during my talk. Just fast. First of all, I didn't get the robocall stuff done until yesterday, and I make that call on well, Friday well, well. night. So you all new ones didn't get it. So, but we did. But we did enter the. Uh, <laughs> Enter the email address, and so she should have got the funds and contact. If you didn't get it, check with us tomorrow. Okay. Now, we're going to see our affirmation together, and then this one. We are uh, sing the song we're singing together is Kumbaya. Uh, it's Kumbaya because that's what we used to do in uh, campfires singing. Girl Scout, yeah. And then, um, and then we have a treat of something that's going to be shared with us. And uh, okay, so let's begin. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
different scene from over there. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Ben. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. This here. So good. Okay. I'd like to acknowledge those of you who have been in service this week or today. Please stand so we can give you a lot of love. We make a difference in our lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really heavily weighted over on this side. To see. <laughs> and if the practitioners remain standing, practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. If you want your life transformed, make an appointment to see one of these people. You'll be so happy you did. And the people in service today are Reverend Carla Sharadis, Tony Sparks, and Kathy Story. Please acknowledge our practitioners. <laughs> if you can find two of them, one back in the affirmative prayer place, one in the tranquility room, and the other one answering questions at the information table. We are so grateful. If you're here for the very first time, we have a gift for you, and all you need to do is indicate it's you and raise your hand. Um, or here, right back here. It's coming slowed and there. Just kidding. Sorry for the wait. We still didn't get it over here. Oh, golly, there's lots of people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for being here. There's some information about our center and a welcome card. And if you fill out that welcome card and take it to the bookstore, we, you will um, receive another gift. It's a book. And we're going to acknowledge you right now. So congregation, please repeat after me. Welcome to our center. Welcome to our center. We know that you're spiritually whole and complete. We know that you're spiritually whole and complete. There's nothing to fix. Nothing to fix. There's nothing broken. Nothing broken. Welcome home. Welcome home. So it is. Do we have some announcements? We do indeed. Well, you know Kelly Corsino? She has so many talents, not just her beautiful music and her talented artistic abilities. She is also a facilitator of a sound bath and healing breath meditation. So today, after the service, stay, stay, gift yourself with this amazing workshop. You will leave here feeling like you've been at the spa all day. It's really just a blessed experience. So um, around noon, we're gonna start and it's on a love offering basis, and childcare is available. So if you have children, you can leave them in there while you are reaping the benefits of this great workshop. So, And also she has CDs available, so go see those CDs. Um, Wednesday morning, August 28th, Lisa McClure will facilitate the parent forum. Um, well, they will discuss um, noticing and being grateful for demonstrations. Light lunch and childcare is provided for that, and that starts at 11:30. And then Wednesday evening, our very own beautiful Reverend Carla will be here to bless us with a talk entitled "Internet," <laughs> not internet, but internet. So come at seven and be inspired. And then on Saturday, September 14th, spiritual medium Jennifer Krieg will present "Exploring Your Intuitive Gifts" workshop. And there is a flyer in your program, and Jennifer's actually here today. You want to stand? And... There she is. Yay. Yay. September 14th, Saturday. Put that on your calendar. And then on Thursday evenings, um, Reverend Dr. <coughs> Roger Juling is teaching an accredited class, Ignite Your Life, the Bible Wisdom. It uh, meets from 6.30 to 9.30 in the multi-purpose room. Um, are these still accepting new students, do you know? Okay. Um, that's a great class. And then on Sundays at 12.30, right here, our, our practitioner, Dave Friedman, is facilitating an accredited class, Self Mastery, the Emergence of the True Self. And from what I understand, you can still join that class and see Dave after the service if you have any questions for that. And now I'd like to invite Kathy Story up here to talk about our friendship circles. Hey guys, something wonderful was happening today. You ready? Yeah. We are now opening up new people for the friendship circles, okay? Ooh. You've heard about these things going on, right? Um, they've been closed, it's been a year. Yeah. 
Wow. So if you've been, you feel left out, see Reverend Carla today at the back, because we are opening them up. Um, a friendship circle, what we do basically is, it's about 10 people and you get together and you actually, you share what's going on in your life and you make a, a really deep connection. Um, I'm very blessed in this because we have Reverend, we have the Rev in ours. And I'm actually getting to know her as a person, you know? And that's what you get to do. It goes to a very deep level. You have uh, meditations that we do. Um, we do spiritual, it's a little spiritual workshop. And, uh, and we support it. We got somebody that, you know, that actually went and sat with somebody for chemo. You know, it's... It's love on a basis, a deep basis that uh, I normally don't get a feel. You know what I mean? I mean, I go to the ends of the earth for these people. I know them at a level that's just unbelievable. So that's what happens in the friendship circles. Um, it says here, I'll read what a friendship circle is. It's a sacred time to join others once a month that we want to create a deep and meaningful conscious conversation. It's a place to be in spiritual practice. It's a time for supporting others and being supported in this thing called life. It is a call to living your best life. If you actually want to get to know somebody on a deep level and get connected, this is your opportunity. See Reverend Carla, thank you. Now it's time to invite in our children. Mm -hmm. 